The two of you. My God, I am so addicted to listening to Who Killed JFK. And Rob, I've got to ask you, is it because you've mastered the art of, of moving pictures on a screen and on a flat screen that you've now taken it to a podcast where you're playing with the screens inside my imagination? Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that that's what's happening to you because I've never done a podcast before. And it is a very different medium for me. Uh, I'm very lucky that I have Soledad with me because she's experienced in this and knows how to tell these stories in a way that 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 does uh, paint these pictures. And she has a great uh, production team that I've been lucky to work with. And uh, hopefully we're we're crafting these episodes so that it does uh, paint a picture for you. Yeah, because Soledad, what, what I love about it is the way that you pace things out and the way that you reset the scene. In other words, you'll go into the story, you'll have a sound bite, and then you come back and you reset it up. And that keeps me engaged as a listener. Well, we certainly appreciate that. I think for me, as somebody who came to the story as an outsider, I haven't been obsessed with the story for 60 years. And it's complicated. So I think in our storytelling, we wanted to make sure that people understood. You know, we had sort of uh, place markers and moments where you could say, well, let's break for a minute and explain what's happening in the globe, right? All of this matters. And and so that kind of pacing was for me, uh, and I think for people like me who don't come in with some set opinion on it, really helped understand and connect the dots. And then for people who know the story well, who are obsessed, who are diving deep into the details, we need to make sure that we have lots and lots of really important evidence-based interviews with the people who were there, who are relevant, who are credible, who can help us move that story forward. And I, I think that's a structure of any good doc. And of course, you know, Rob is being incredibly modest because he's like an amazing storyteller and we just we just moved him over to the podcast space. <laughs> well, Rob, the way that you break it down, especially when it comes to the infamous bullet, because so many people still don't understand the story of the bullet. Mm -hmm. Yes. And by the way, if you look at that one piece of evidence, which is actually part of the third episode, which uh, comes out tomorrow, we deal with all the forensics. If you look at that one piece of evidence and really understand what the Warren Commission was saying, that that one bullet did, that's a case closed. I mean, you cannot look past that and say that one that this one bullet caused all this damage. It's not possible, it can't be done. And once you realize that any sane person looking at that would say not possible, that opens the door to the fact that there was enough, at least one more shooter, which makes it a conspiracy. It's that one little piece of evidence. So we try to lay it out as clear as possible what the Warren Commission claimed that that one bullet accomplished. So, Ladad, what what's really great about this is the way that you take us back to this time period. I mean, like you said, you you weren't there, but yet you, you the way that it's all painted out, where we've got the Cuban Missile Crisis, we've got uh, the the world could be blowing up. Now we've lost the president, and 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 the guy that killed the president has been killed too. How, as a journalist, do you put yourself in the center of this storm, knowing what's going on today? Yeah, you know, I think it's exactly uh, about that, just making sure people understand how people in the moment uh, felt. I mean, think about it, and, and Rob describes this really well. He watched as Lee Harvey Oswald, the person who was accused of killing the president, was murdered on live TV. I mean, at that time, 60 years ago, that's crazy. And the impact of that on the American psyche, if you will, is really important. It was important for us to do a deep dive into the Cuban Missile Crisis. It was because it sets the stage for what is actually happening. Why are people in the CIA mad at the president? Why are the Cuban exiles mad at President Kennedy? Why is the mob mad at President Kennedy? All of those details are very important to understand the bigger picture. I think you know, my mom was Cuban, right? So we, I knew some of the stories, but I didn't know the facts around them. And I think understanding the facts is essential to piece together what happened. Rob, are you on a mission when it comes to this podcast, meaning that podcasts have freed people from prison? This right here might free America from its worst murder mystery. Yes, and I think it can do even more than that, which is it can put... We're in right now. The country is in a, a very tough place. Uh, we're very divided. Uh, there's a tremendous distrust in the government. We need to uh, save our democracy. And the way to do that 
is to base it on truth. The public needs to know the truth, not just about the, uh, the, the assassination of the president, but the founding of our country. What is the truth? Slavery, what we did to the native population of the, of the country. If we can come to uh, grips with the truth of this country, then we can begin to build a more perfect union. Democracy will not survive unless it's, ba- unless it's uh, laid on a foundation of truth. And it's harder to tell the truth now than ever before because of disinformation and social media and AI and all that. And this was all taking place back in the early part of the 1960s. And, and it's like, I didn't know where the origin was, but you guys identify it inside this podcast, Who Killed JFK? Yeah, I think we go a long way to explaining. And I think a lot of that came from Rob and his sense of at that time as a 16 year old, you know, you could feel the the turn, the change, the data supports it as well, right? We see that, I think the numbers are somewhere in the 70% of people mm-hmm. polled said that they trusted the government. That number's down in the teens, I believe today. So we know that shift happened. And I think there's a very credible argument to be made that that event, seeing that the, what the government was telling folks and then not telling folks was um, went a long way to undermining public trust in the government. And uh, I think that's something that unfortunately we struggle with to this day. People just do not believe, you know, immediately what the government was telling them. And I, yeah. I think the roots uh, come from that time. You, you know, I think that, that you make a really good point in that uh, I don't believe Watergate, the investigation that Woodward and Bernstein did into Watergate, would have happened had not there been other journalists that started questioning the Warren Commission yep. because people wanted to believe the government. Once they started not believing the government so much with the Warren Commission, I think gave license to people like Woodward and Bernstein to say, wait a minute, a president is doing something wrong here. And so I think he gave birth to Watergate. Now we're in a situation where uh, there's all, you know, it's easy to cloud the truth Mm -hmm. with disinformation and people are having a hard time disseminating what's true and what's not. But uh, we have to get back to telling the truth and having people understand it. Absolutely. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for the two of you. Thank Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Will you be brilliant today? Okay. Okay. I try. <laughs> yeah.